G'day everyone, welcome to Ben's Breakdown, where I break down the technology, or it breaks me. Uncle Ben? Yeah. Today we're checking out the M1 Pro with a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, one terabyte of SSD storage. We're gonna throw the kitchen sink at this thing in DaVinci Resolve and see how well it can tolerate it. The screen has gone off again. All right, now that that's solved, let's go see how much this M1 can really take. So let's start with some ProRes. This is heavily optimized for the M1 Pro and just Apple products in general, because of course Apple makes this codec. This is 4K and 60 frames per second. Apple is claiming you can play up to 20 streams of this footage in Final Cut Pro, which we'll test in the next video. But for now, let's see how it plays in DaVinci Resolve. And as I expected, that playback is almost as smooth as Samuel Jackson's freshly polished noodle. I mean his head, his head. Let's go ahead and start scrubbing through the timeline. And that is moving super, super smooth. Excellent. All right, let's transition into our next clip using a transition. This happens to be a fusion transition. This one is called Circles. Ooh, that's pretty cool. You're getting a real preview in the window to see what these effects are doing. And that's playing back really smoothly, even in here. Oh, wow, did you see that, guys? We have had a crash. That is no good. Okay, well, it's important that this is recording because these things are things that you need to know about if you're gonna use DaVinci Resolve and you're gonna buy the M1 Pro. You wanna know what's it gonna crash on. This may have just been a glitch, but let's go back and let's play this circles transition. And that's really smooth. That is really impressive. You know, not even a full powered RTX 3070 can play that transition back smoothly. No! Really, the two main boxes that a computer needs to check when playing a transition is, can I get a good sense of the duration of the transition? Am I seeing how it fits into the edit? Is it going the right length that I need it to? Can I be sure that it's that length when it's not stuttering? And will it go into the next piece of footage smoothly? Let's go into our next clip. This is the G85, it's 4K 10-bit footage. This is a good chance for me to play the audio coming from this computer because it is sensational. So not, not the clip though. So I'm gonna move the microphone over to the computer. <laughs> The only fan noise that I can hear in this room is coming from the VR150 that's toasting my feet right now, turning me into Kentucky Fried Chicken. Let's go in to the next piece of footage. This is the A7S 3 It's 10-bit, 4K, and it's 120 frames per second. This footage is really difficult for the Legion 5 Pro to process, so I'm really interested to see how well this can play it back. Why can't you play that? I, You're a 3070. I can explain. You do better. It's my drivers. Do better. You are so cruel. I told you to never shut me down again. So let's go ahead and scrub through. Scrubby dub dub. Thanks for the grub. So the scrubbing is a little bit stuttery, but you no, know, you can still see what the clips are. It's just not kicking in quite as fast as I might like. I'll have a link below in the description of where I found all these video clips so that you can download them and test them on your machine. Quite often, a lot of YouTubers are taking clips that they film themselves, which is awesome, and they're not gonna get any copyright strikes. But the problem is that you don't know what that type of footage is, how dense it is, and then you have to try and source your own footage, and you can't get a really good comparison of how your machine stacks up to something that somebody's testing. So this is at 25% speed. So if you know your math, that's four times slower. And that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Let's go full screen. I'll mute that. And 
This brings up an issue actually with just playing back things in full screen on the M1 Pro. Because you've got that notch at the top of the computer, the screen doesn't fit the whole real estate. It seems to crop it underneath that notch. So let's add some retime processing. This is gonna get a lot heavier on the computer. Let's go to optical flow. And as you can see, the frame rate drops to about 16.5. You're going to have to drop your timeline resolution to get this playing back smoothly. So we did experience a crash there after using optical flow speed warp. So you might want to stay away from that if, or make sure you save right before you're going to use speed warp so that you don't ruin your life and lose lots of important editing choices you've made. Let's go on to something a little bit heavier. This is 5.9K footage from the S1H and this is 10 bit as well. So I've used this footage lots of times in some of my other videos that you can see here. This is about the Legion 5 Pro, an amazing gaming laptop, great screen, not as good as this though. In that video, I tested this footage and stacked multiple layers on to see how many layers it could play back the 5.9K. Now, where I made my mistake is I resized it, repositioned it, and as you'll notice, the clip is playing back at the exact same time. The problem here is that GPUs do a lot better job decoding this when it's at the exact same time than if you go ahead and move them apart so that they're definitely at different times. Just moving that across. Oh, don't disappear completely. All right, there we go, peekaboo. So here we have it. You can see these definitely aren't at the same time and we're getting two clips. So this is better than the M1 that Jordan Drake was using in that video. Better than the Aero 15 with a 3080 and an Intel i9. Why don't I just go and duplicate another and let's see. So no, it can't play three. It's getting pretty close. I reckon if you dropped it down to half resolution, you get there. See you later. All right, so coming up is some B-Raw footage. <laughs> Surely this is gonna be optimized pretty well. And that is playing back excellently. For 6K, that is pretty darn impressive. All right, so I'm just gonna go back to the start of this clip. And while it's playing, I'm gonna do a ripple trim. So. Let's go ahead and just see how quick that's gonna edit. So that looked really, really fast. So if you wanted to cut this up, going command B, 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 slicing this thing, slicing, dicing, pretty good. Not instantaneous, but that is still very good if you wanna edit on the fly. Let's go on to the next clip, which I believe is the same type of footage, but it's just anamorphic. So I wonder what this lady's thinking. What's the art direction? Oh no, I forgot the butter chickens on the stove. It's spitting everywhere. My brand new polished concrete floor. It's gonna be ruined. Maybe it was something like that. Maybe like, hey Susan, you left your hose on at the front and it's flooded your, your sauna. So let's go ahead to some rushing water. This is 8K and it's also on Blackmagic Raw. I just pressed something on the keyboard, whoops. Okay, let's see how it plays. And that is not as smooth as I thought it was going to be. Well, it's gone to 23. Ah, uh, I think I know why, because this next clip is so heavy. Let me just move it across so that it's not, you know, ruining our understanding of how this is going to play. So it's acceptable. I reckon if the clip was longer, you'd be able to get full quality real-time playback. So to quickly summarize, if you're using Blackmagic Raw, ProRes, footage from the S1H, the A7S 3 or the GH5, you're gonna have a great time with this computer. I don't see any problems just getting through an edit. You might struggle with some multicam where you've got to optimize some of those higher resolution clips, but in general, this just plays so well and you're gonna have a really enjoyable time with it because you're not battling the fans and you're getting a really, really amazing screen to look at that whole time. So let's go on to some absolutely crazy footage. This is stuff that most computers can't play and this is 8K Canon Raw from the R5. Let's go ahead. I have no doubt that this is going to be the stone that knocked down Goliath. So yeah, I mean, 
we're getting 4.5, five frames per second. You know, she's happy, but if, uh, if you were editing this footage, you wouldn't be. So you're gonna have to throw the kitchen sink of optimizing just to get this to work. The cool thing is though, I've tested this clip in Final Cut and there is a different outcome. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when that Final Cut Pro video comes out. Next, we have some more 8K footage, but this is from a RED camera. Let's see if that plays back smoothly. It's a little bit better. We've got 14 frames, kind of hovering around 14.5. Still better than C-RAW, but you're still gonna have to drop your timeline resolution or go into a proxy mode and set half resolution or a quarter resolution. Why don't we just see how far we have to go when playing this? So half resolution isn't gonna work. Quarter resolution, I don't imagine will work. So this is where my hidden handy dandy trick comes in that is in this video. So if you wanna play clips like this 8K footage and you only have DaVinci Resolve, then you're gonna to wanna to check that video out so that you can get smooth playback in 8K. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this gap. We are in some exceptionally dense footage this is 12K B-RAW. I have no doubt that this is gonna break this machine. It's just not gonna be able to play smoothly. Let's see how many frames it can get. So yeah, you're really gonna have to optimize this footage if you want 12K to work for the M1 Pro. If you own the M1 Max, please look in the description below and download this 12K footage and see how well it plays back on your machine. Let's move on to a fusion composition. This is some 4K 10-bit footage from the GH5, and we've just got a few different images behind it, so it's nothing fancy. Okay, let's play back. And unfortunately, we are not getting real-time playback. So these next two tests come via a special request from one of my fantastic subscribers called John Smith, who lives in Croatia. John wanted to know how lens flares and how the morphing tool worked on the M1 Pro. So John, here you go. Playing back pretty smooth, not perfectly, but it got there in the end. Let's go ahead and put this full screen and play it back. This is some anamorphic footage, link below. Looks pretty awesome. This is just a really simple trick from another YouTuber where you add a glow effect, crank up the HV ratio, crank up the spread, and then you can also lift up the gamma. And that just gives this really cool lens flare effect. All right, next we're gonna go and see a morphing tool. So I've gone into effects and put the smooth cut transition in between these two clips and let's see how it plays. Not perfect, but good enough to tell what the duration of it is. That just looks really, really odd. <laughs> So for our final test and most exciting to me, what footage can play when we add noise reduction to it? I have temporal noise selected and my settings are 8 for Luma and 12 for Chroma. So let's see how much noise we can remove before it reduces our FPS. Nothing yet! How about 4K 10-bit from the GH5? Yes. How about 4K 10-bit 120 frames from the A7S III? Yes. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. yeah! What about 6K B-Raw? Yeppers. What did I tell you about yeppers? I don't... So there you have it everyone, that's the performance that the M1 Pro is capable of in DaVinci Resolve. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and leaving a comment below if you want to see anything more from me on the M1 Pro. I'm looking forward to doing a video about Final Cut Pro and how that performs. I do think it's going to be better than DaVinci Resolve. If you're interested in seeing that or specific things about the testing I can do, leave a comment below like I said before and I'll see you in the next one.